What's up, y'all? It is your girl, Kyra. I hope everything is going great on your side of the camera. Everything is going pretty good on mine. I cannot complain. I'm so glad that you all clicked on this video and that you decide to join in with me um, on this journey and just seeing where this is taking us, seeing this where it's taking me. I know that the inconsistency has been real, but you know what? That's how a weight loss journey is. Boy, sometimes we on, sometimes we off. But here we are. We are here and I'm glad that I am here with you all. I hope you all that are glad that you're here with me. Today I'm talking about something that I have picked up on while going through this process and learning more and more and more about myself, um, how the Lord fits in with my life, how I fit in with the Lord, and so on and so forth. So um, if you read the title of the video, you saw where it said that, who are you talking to? And I am here to talk about what our inner thoughts are saying to ourselves, how much they drive um, the things that we do outside of ourselves, the things that we do externally when it comes down to what, how we carry out different tasks, how we uh, finish fast, how we eat, how we um, overindulge, underindulge, all of those things, how we hold ourselves accountable basically. So um, without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, so um, this all started from a conversation that I had with a friend. I was on a fast and um, I was doing, the, I've been doing the cover by God fast with Tiffany Montgomery. I don't know if you all know her. If you do, great. If you don't, if you don't, you should check her out. Um, but she has a fast that she does the first three days of every single month. And this particular time when I was fasting, uh, it was a lot going on that weekend. And I was like, I probably just shouldn't fast. And then I was like, oh, no, I'm going to try it. So it was over the weekend. So it was Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Ugh. Worst days to have a fast on in my head. Um, and my husband was a part of a wedding. And... I it was his dad's birthday so both of those things ugh, food is going to be involved like what why are we fasting on this this is horrible this is a horrible idea we're setting ourselves up for failure but I didn't think too much into it so I just went ahead and started the fast okay everything was going great I fasted on Friday everything was going cool and then we had um a game uh, I think it was a game no his dad's birthday we went to his parents' house for his dad's birthday. I was good. I didn't eat nothing. Everybody was, you know, eating and she had like the food catered. It was really, it was a lot. It's food I like, but I was good. I was not around the food. I made sure I didn't even go in the kitchen. I was good. But there was cake. There was cake. And I was like, I'm not going to get no cake. Um, his mom was cutting everybody a piece of cake and I was good. I was like, I'm not gonna even going to get up. This woman brought me my, <coughs> excuse me. This woman brought me my favorite piece of cake. It was an end piece. It had so much icing. I was like, oh my Jesus. I was like, why would she bring me this cake? Like she was like, here. I was like, oh my God. I just don't want to eat this cake right now because I am fasting. But you know, you're not supposed to be telling everybody that you're fasting. And I guess I could have told her in that moment, but at the same time, I wanted that cake. You know what I'm saying? So I ate the cake and I was like, well, we ate the cake anime and ain't nothing we can do about it. Let's just move on. We fasted all day. We ate the cake. Let's move on. Next day, we go back up to his mom's house and they have a game night that evening. So I'm like, I'm not going to eat. I'm good. I ate. I, um, I, I've been, you know, fasting all day. I'm good. And I tried to eat before I even came because the game night was later because I was fasting from six to six. Y'all, we get up there. Everything's fine. We play the games. Everybody's fine. And I kept having to walk by this cake, same cake from the day before. I kept having to walk by this cake and it's nothing left but in pieces. I was like, this ain't nothing but the devil. Okay, why would this be the only piece left? Why would these be the only pieces left? I was so irritated. So I kept walking around. I was good. And the kids at the table were constantly talking about, I want a piece of cake. I want a piece of cake. I want a piece of cake. They kept saying it over and over again. I was like, dang, I want a piece of cake too, y'all. But dang, stop saying it. You know what I'm saying? Like, stop talking about it. 
So, um, it kept going and they kept talking about the cake. I ended up breaking out and getting another piece of cake. Oh my God. Okay. So Sunday I was like, okay, Lord, this is the final day of this fast. Okay. And I'm irritated. I have basically in my head failed twice. Even though I fasted from six to six, I still ate cake. And cake was not a part of after this after the after six plan. So I was super irritated at myself. I was very mad at myself. But I tried to give myself some grace because like I'm really starting to get into fasting and this is new. Like this is not something I grew up doing. I'm also breaking generational curses with like, you know, overindulging in food, all of that stuff. So anyway, um Sunday comes and I have to, um, my husband's in a wedding. So we get there a little earlier. He's trying to eat. I'm like, babe, you really going to eat in front of me right now? Like, you know, I'm fasting. He like, I mean, I'm not fasting. I'm like, thanks. So I was like, you know what, whatever. Go ahead and get your food. We're all good. And I just started getting irritated. Like, I was getting really irritated about this. And I, my husband told me to reach out to my friend, Rashida. And Rashida has just like walked me through a lot of different things as far as like my diet and just like health and nutrition and stuff. She's always walked me through those type of things. And at this particular time, I reached out to her because I was fasting. And I'm like, hey, listen, I feel like maybe I shouldn't have fasted because I mean, this was like not the best week in the fast. And she was like, well, you know, when you think about it, will there ever be a perfect time to fast? Like, you know, um, you're remember why you're doing this. Like constantly keep remembering yourself, remembering why you're doing this. And I, she was like, also, I want to applaud you for reaching out to me because the old you would have just been like, well, bump it. I'm just going to be done with the fast and eat and do whatever I'm doing. And so she applauded me for that. And I was thinking, I was like, dang, you know, this is something I need to start really paying attention to. Like the thoughts that I'm telling myself and the thoughts that I'm telling my friend, like reaching out to somebody, like making myself reach out to somebody thinking like, oh, I need help. And having my husband be that, you know, voice of reason in that particular moment, that was great. So at that moment, I realized that what I'm telling myself, what I'm saying out loud, who I'm speaking to makes a big difference on how this journey can be successful or it can fail. And um, I even, you know, I'm in therapy right now as well. And my therapist is constantly talking about how I'm speaking about myself, what I'm saying about myself, how I'm talking to myself, because whatever happens in my mind is what's going to come out of my body, what's going to be the next thing I do. So, I mean, think about when God created the heavens and the earth. That was from a thought. He thought it and then it started, you know, going from there. So what we think and what we say to ourselves, our inner thoughts definitely drives our outer actions. And I wanted to bring this video to you all because it's something I've been like um, thinking about and it's been coming up a lot when it comes to this journey. Because when I feel and I tell myself I can't do it, when I tell myself I should quit, when I tell myself this isn't working, when I tell myself, you know, I suck, talking about all of those things, those things become facts to me. Those things actually drive my next task. Those things actually create self-sabotage and all of those things like that. And the thing is, what I'm learning, me not leaning on my own understanding is so important too, you know? Um, during this process, me pulling on grace, me talking to God, having those inner conversations with the Lord, like, hey, Lord, what's going on? Can you help me with this thought? I don't know what's happening, so on and so forth. Um, but I also wanted to explain to you all the things that are happening inside of us also comes from external sources. So like what we're watching what we're reading, what we're listening to, all of those things are inf are influential to how we operate in life. Like I was watching, um, I love reality TV and I was watching a reality TV show and I kept having bad moods. Like every single day I went to work, I had a super horrible attitude. I was very irritated. And it was because that reality show I was watching was super negative and they were always irritable, always arguing. So they got into my spirit. So now th these are my thoughts. This is how I'm feeling. Whatever they were saying in in the video in the 
show is how I was starting to feel about myself. So then those drove out my different actions that I was doing. I was eating horrible. I was doing all of those things. And honestly, what I've noticed when you eat bad, that also affects your attitude too. So the external things have a big effect on your internal as well as your internal have a big effect effect on your external. So um, that's something I've picked up on this process. And um, what we say to ourselves definitely creates the world that we live in. Um, like I, like I said, like when the Lord created the heavens and the earth, he spoke these things out and life and life and death is in the power of the tongue. So if we're speaking constant death, death is going to be around us. Things are just going to die. Things are going to fall apart. Things are not going to go well. But if we're speaking life, if we're, if we're speaking positivity, if we're speaking great things, those things are also going to come to pass. Um, so I noticed that when it came to this weight loss journey, when it came to me saying, you know what, I can do this. I can I can do what I, I can do, what I need to do in, in order to get where I need to go. And those first initial conversations with myself are the biggest drive of saying whether I'm going to work out, whether I'm going to eat right, whether I'm going to um breathe whether i'm going to have straight up anxiety all of that plays a part so um just to recap what i just said just kind of be careful what you're watching what you're ingesting what you're digesting um because that also regurgitates into the life that you're living it makes the biggest difference um so with all that being said, how in the world do we get to a good spot with our thoughts and how we're talking to ourselves, how we're thinking about ourselves? While spending time with the Lord, I felt like he gave me um, a pretty cool acronym. It's called TALK. And I wanted to share it with you all. And I hope that you all like it. I hope that you are all able to use it. I've definitely been using it and it's been a lot easier. So, um, like in my last video, I was talking about those moments of assessment, like waiting to see, do I really need this ice cream right now? Do I really need to do this right now? Is this really a big deal? Why am I thinking this? You know, those moments of stopping and pausing are super important. So, the first letter in talk is T. So, it's take a moment and think. Take a moment and think about what you're feeling. Take a moment and think about what you're saying. Just take a moment. And um, I thought that me taking a moment and thinking was huge because it stops me from my impulses. Think about how our flesh works. Our flesh works off impulses. It wants to do whatever it wants to do right then at the moment. But, you know, patience is a fruit of the spirit. So us pausing and having patience with ourselves, analyzing the situation, analyzing our thought, analyzing what we're feeling, what we're thinking, how we're, um, what our environment is at that particular moment, it makes a big difference in those particular situations when those thoughts come, regardless of if it's an intrusive thought, if, if it's a positive thought, if it's a thought from the Lord or an enemy, taking that moment to stop and think about what you're thinking is super important okay so then um the a is for acknowledge the lord's presence um like i said before we're not supposed to lean on our own understanding we can honestly put ourselves in detrimental places because of how we're thinking and where else are we gonna get the thoughts from we can get them from other people but if the holy spirit lives inside of us we can also get it from ourselves as well so um the scripture that I found to use for this particular uh, letter, acknowledge, which is Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. And it's in the New King James Version. It says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Remember what I said before, whatever is happening on the inside is what's going to follow out what we do on the outside. So if we are acknowledging that the Lord is there, the Lord is listening, the Lord is available to us, we're not leaning on our own understanding. We're saying, Lord, I need help with this. I don't know why I'm feeling like I suck. I don't know why I'm feeling irritated or anxious or why I feel like I'm not going to be able to move forward. Um, 
and then acknowledging him in all your ways every single thing every single thought that comes up that that you don't know what to do with acknowledge him invite him in ask him hey lord what do you think this thought means is this from you is this from me is this a positive thought is this a negative thought and then allow him to direct your path in that particular moment. This way, it's not so much pressure on you to think about what to do next, to think about what to say next, to think about how to carry out the next thing. The pressure is not on you anymore. It literally alleviates that pressure and puts it on the one that can carry it. He is the heavy load carrier. Amen. Amen. Okay. And then we have L. So L is for lay it down. And we are just laying these thoughts down at the feet of the Father. And we're just allowing him to do his thing with it. And I think that's a struggle for all of us because I struggle with control. <laughs> I'll be trying to be like, I got this. I can control it. Ain't no problem. Ain't no big deal. I can do everything I need to do with what I need to do. And I've been in control of my life the, this entire time. And I don't need nobody to tell me how to do X, Y, and Z. But... The positive about us laying these things down is that we can fully lean on the Lord for these things. And we can cast down the negative thoughts. If the Lord tells us that it's a negative thought, we can cast that down too. Um, but the verse that came to mind for this was 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 6. And it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and everything that exalts itself against the, the, the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So this allows us to make sure that we are obeying the Lord. It, it allows us to lay these thoughts down and take it captive and keep it from like rising up against what the will of God, what the will God has for our life. So this is a positive thing because it helps us walk in obedience, which is a great thing that um, we as Christians really need to have in our daily walk, have in our daily thought process. So laying it at the Lord's feet, casting it down, being like, okay, Lord, if this if this is coming up against you, we need to cast it down. We are done with this thought. We are laying this mug down. I don't want to think nothing else about it. Or I don't need to think anything else about it. I need to lay this down at your feet. Um, and then the K is for kick or keep. Now, after the two basically assessment ones, like the, the acknowledging the Lord and leaning out on your own understanding and then, you know, casting the thought down, making sure that seeing if this thought, weighing the thought out, seeing if this is of the Lord or if this is rising up against the Lord, if this is obedience or not, then you have kick or keep. Am I keeping this thought? Is this thought going in the direction that the Lord has me to go? Or do I need to kick this thought out of my mind? Saying like, all right, we don't need to think this. This is this is nothing but the enemy. This is nothing but me negatively thinking. This is something from my past trying to rise up to me. Also, keep in mind when you're talking to yourself, pay attention to the enemy's voice. He doesn't speak life. He doesn't speak positivity. He doesn't speak goodness. He's the accuser of the brethren. So he may bring up things from your past. He may bring up things that your mom dad said or your dad said or your friend said the other week that really dis disturbed your spirit. He's there. He's a negative disruptor. So um, in that moment, see if you're going to keep the thought or you're going to kick it out. Um, so the acronym is TALK, and I'm just going to run through them once again. So take a moment and think. Acknowledge the Lord's presence. Um and allow him to direct it. So acknowledge and allow. Those are two. And then lay it down. Cast that bug down. Okay. If it's rising up against the obedience that the Lord has said before you. And then you either get to keep the thought or you get to kick it out after those assessments. So these are um, four huge points that have been helping me with how I'm speaking to myself during this journey. Am I there yet? No. But I'm realizing these foundational Moments are super imperative of how I need to show up in the world, of how I need to show up with myself. Because however I'm, whatsoever a man thinketh, so is he. Period. Um, so 
I just wanted to share that with you all and I I hope this helped you. I hope this blessed you. I hope that you'll be able to use it um, in your life and I'll see you guys in the next one. Love you. Keep God first and you won't be last.